Rob and I are not going to do what uh, we've been doing a lot of the last little while, which is, you know, while all of us are kind of hunkering down at home, we're doing the self-quarantining thing, we're doing the social distancing thing, we're doing our part to make sure we get this BS behind us as fast as we can. And so in the spirit of trying to make lemonade out of lemons, what a lot of people have been trying to do is find some underappreciated gems or maybe some classics they've never watched and use this opportunity to get caught up in those. So Rob and I have been making some movie recommendations. And Rob, I know you, you got a recommendation today that you are actually quite enthusiastic about. What is your movie recommendation today for people to get caught up on? John, it's one of my favorite movies, believe it or not, of all time. It's in my top 10 I saw it when I was 12 years old, and it was massively influential in in the rest of my life, really. And it's director Bob Fosse's Ramona Clef on his own life, really. 1979's All That Jazz. And All That Jazz tells the story of director Joe Gideon, played by Roy Scheider, in a spectacular performance, who is a very thinly veiled Bob Fosse himself. And uh, Joe Gideon, the character of Joe Gideon, is... is juggling his ex-wife but he's juggling the broadway show he's preparing he's editing a movie which is a thinly disguised version of the film he actually directed lenny starring dustin hoffman about lenny bruce and it's a phantasmagoria about a man dealing with his own mortality his own life his own loves his own work and uh the film, the framing device is jessica lang basically plays a character angelique who's the angel of death and and Joe Gideon is kind of going through his life in sort of this purgatory netherworld talking to her and sort of explaining himself before he moves on to the next plane of existence. And it it is, from a filmmaking standpoint, from a directing standpoint, Bob Fosse came off the triumph of, of 1972's Cabaret, then in 1974 made Lenny, then made this, which is basically the story of his own life. It is... It made me want to direct movies. It made me want to edit movies. Alan Heim's editing in this film is absolutely spectacular. And it's also one of the great fantasy movies ever made. And it really is an incredible look at movie making, at show business, at, at, at life. And what is the life of an artist? And it is so, it's got incredible musical numbers. It's got, uh, it, it's just, it's a spectacular piece of filmmaking. I heard once that David Fincher said that it was his favorite movie. Oh, but wow. if you've never if you've never seen it, it's just everything that I want cinema to be. But then also it, it has a lot to say. It even has a lot to say about being a father, being a husband, being a man, in addition to being an artist and being a director and and what is it like to 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 live a life in the arts. I, I mean, this film speaks to me on so many levels. I've seen it a hundred times. I never get tired of this film. It's just beautifully, beautifully made. And I could watch this movie forever. I have the Criterion Blu-ray, John, if you might imagine that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, again, I saw this movie when I was 12, and it, it probably was a little bit beyond me at the time, but I was so taken aback by this. I dragged my parents to it. I don't even know why I wanted to see it as much as I did. Um, and I, I was just knocked out. And every time I watch this movie throughout my life, it continues to speak to me, and in a way, it just gets better and better and better. And my God, is it amazing. So your recommendation today is uh, All That Jazz, which is great. I, I think Roy got nominated for an Academy Award for that one. Yeah. Did he not? Yes, um, he, spe- he should have won. He's spectacular. Um, so that's a good one. That's a good deep cut on that one. All right. So let's, let's get on to my recommendation. My recommendation is one that you have all heard of. You have all heard of this movie. However, given that it only made 20-something million at the box office, not all of you have actually gone ahead and watched the film. Uh, It is a movie that, to me, made me excited about the idea of making movies. It just made me excited about the idea of making movies because of the way it was done. And I am going to talk about here today the Jason Statham film, Crank. That came out in 2006. And I'm going to tell you why this movie is really kind of special to me. This was a movie that is a balls to the wall, high octane, big action. They push the pedal to the floor and they never take their foot off the entire time from start of the movie to the end of the movie. And a lot of the most wacky, crazy things happens in the midst of it. And it's got Jason Statham 
and Amy Smart, who is just awesome. I love them both very, very much. The basic premise of Crank is this. Chev Chelios finds out he's been poisoned, and it's a particular type of poison that it's going to kill him, but adrenaline holds it at bay, so he has to keep his adrenaline up. For the next number, he has to keep his adrenaline completely peaked for the rest of the day until he can get uh, the, the, the antidote or the cure for this thing, whatever it is. And in the midst of him constantly having to be in movement and motion and keeping his adrenaline up, it is the crazy thing. The action happens. The love story happens. The Amy Smart stuff happens. All this kind of stuff. It is just incredibly fun. It's just an incredibly fun ride uh, the whole way through. Now, here's the interesting thing about it, too is that what the other thing that makes me really fall in love with this film and appreciate it, now this was directed by Mark Devil Dean and Brian Taylor, who are, of course, friends of mine, but I had not met them uh, by the time I watched uh, the first Crank film. And here's why this thing made me fall in love. This movie cost $12 million to make. $12 million. Which is just ridiculous when you consider how much is going on in this movie. And, and all the action that's going on and all the kind of stuff and a lot of people that are all this kind of nonsense. But as you watch the movie, you get the feeling and, and it's true. This is a movie made by a couple of guys on rollerblades. I kid you not, like Mark Neville Dean, he literally would slap on rollerblades, hold the camera himself as a motorcycle would pull him behind the motorcycle as he's holding the camera himself to get this shot of a chasing car thing going on a thing. They would just do whatever it took. It was a class in guys, you want to make a movie for just make it yourself. Here's how you do it. Go. And Neville Dean and Taylor just put on this symphony of chaos with this movie crank that made me just so appreciate the idea of movie making. It's not all one formula. It's just crazy and bonkers along the way. It's the movie that made me a big fan of Jason Statham, uh, to be honest with you. Like, that was the movie to me. Like, I, I love Crank and, and or uh, Lock, Stock and stuff like that. But it's the movie that really made me a big fan of Jason Statham, Rob. And so, while it is not, you know, it's not Die Hard. It's not True Lies. But there's just something so special when you combine the chaos of it, the low budget nature of it, the really guerrilla sort of filmmaking approach that Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor took to making this movie. Uh, it's just a, it's just a special film to me that I really, really love. So I want to recommend Crank. Uh, it's 14 years old now. Can't believe that movie's 14 years old now. Rob, do you ever have a chance to watch uh, watch Crank? Dude, I've seen Crank and it is a hoot. I mean, it's so much fun, and the way it was shot, there's so much verve in it, and, you know, it does it, it's got both, it, it just has this independent vibe to it, and the way it was shot was, uh, I love, didn't they, they, like, weren't they, like, on skateboards and things when they shot a lot of the scenes in this movie? I oh, mean, yeah. they did some crazy, crazy stuff, and it's just fun to watch. Dude, I- It'll I, put I, a big smile on your face. God, listen, I had a chance to go and be on set of Crank 2. And it is, it is crazy, like skateboards, rollerblades, like yeah. literally uh, one scene, the director himself actually grabbed onto a rope and they pulled him over on a rope so he could be in a position and he's hanging by a rope with one hand, holding the camera with another. I was, I was there just to watch him like, how do we get this shot? Oh, you know, I got this great idea for a shot. They literally stacked one table on top of another table. And then one of the two guys, I think it was Brian, climbed to the top of this precarious thing, just holding the camera himself so he could get the shot that he wanted to get. Like just the way you would think your buddies would go out and say, shoot a movie yeah. in the next 24 hours. That's how they shot it. And I thought the results were crazy. So my recommendation today, guys, is Crank Roberts' recommendation is all that jazz. couple of new little gems for you guys to check out while you are quarantining yourselves at home. Okay, guys.